other friend. Hallelujah. All right. How many of you are blessed already? Okay. Were you in church on Wednesday? How many of you are in church on Wednesday? You were. Wave your hands to the Lord. Great. Were you blessed? When you realize you're on the right path, facing the right direction, just keep walking. Amen. Amen. That is all it is going to take. Amen. All right. And this week is just the first week of the 52 weeks. But remember, this is one year of your 70 and over years on earth. Don't waste a whole year. You have only 70. And if you get more, it's by the grace of God. Say amen to that. I said if you get more, it's by the grace of God. Say amen to that. So don't waste your life. Let it count for something. Amen. I said let your life count for something. Amen. It's never too late to begin anything. If people who don't pray in tongues like we do are able to get a high school diploma at 40 and by 52 they have a master's degree and become a president of their country then I believe that it is possible for you to become anything you set your mind to say amen to that as I say amen to that all right and this year we told you that is a year to receive grace to double so it's a year for grace to double grace that unleashes us grace that liberates and empowers us to achieve anything we set our minds to achieve isn't it and we said that if that grace is going to work for you if that grace is going to yield results there are five things that you ought to be doing we said there are five things number one you live by the way by the truth and by the life amen and amen so live by jesus so you must live your life there is a life god wants you to live and you must be living that life and the second thing is you must publish the way the truth and the life listen if somebody sends you a message don't pass it on until you are verified it is true don't be an agent to spread falsehood and lies amen sometimes people are just sending junk don't forward those junk to your friends you'll just be spreading fear and anxiety amen and amen so anything you receive if you have not verified it as the truth don't forward it to anyone amen don't forward it to anyone until you are verified is the truth there's a lot of rubbish being parried built around and if you take don't take care you just publish it that is why we said that in this year you publish the way you publish the truth and you publish the life amen and amen and the third thing you do if you really want to double is to reach out to others reach out to others don't let your life just be about me and i and myself amen and amen don't you let your life just be about you let it also be about others widows orphans prisoners the sick the naked the hungry just reach out to others like Matthew chapter 25 says, when you do that, you are doing it for the Lord. So a ministry of compassion is an important ministry for all those who want to double in this particular year. Say amen to that. Good. And the fourth thing that you do, which we talked about, that is going to help you to increase, is that you must care for things entrusted to you things entrusted to you care for it so if there is a business if you're a christian businessman like myself i do tent ministry so i work with my own hands and i supply the needs of those who are with me so i preach i don't take a salary i work with my own hands i meet my own needs and i meet the needs of others who are with me say amen to that and then so if there is anything entrusted to your care as a Christian businessman or a Christian businesswoman, make sure you are taking care of it as for the Lord. Say amen to that. Be a steward of your business. Be a steward of your career. Be a steward of your opportunities. Be a steward of everything entrusted to your care. The breast you have was entrusted to your care. 
your body is not yours it's the lord's temple is entrusted to your care take very good care of it bath it well amen and amen deodorant it well treat the body well take good care of your skin because it is for the lord you are only a steward over it say amen to that your body is for the lord so your health is the lord your strength is the lord your money is the lord anything entrusted to your care my children are not mine they are the lord's children that are entrusted to my care so i take very good care of them as one who will give account of them say amen to that say amen to that so i take very good care of them anything my wife is not mine she's a daughter of the lord a sister in the faith i must take good care of her and she must also take good care of me as a brother in the faith amen and amen that's how life goes so if you really want to double the fourth thing you do is take care of things entrusted to your care there is something god has entrusted to your care take very good care of it amen and amen then the fifth thing you do if you really you are serious about doubling which i'm going to repeat several times is that equip others to be able to do what you have been taught to do matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20 go into the nations and make disciples of me teaching them to do everything i've taught you to do second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 it says the things that thou have learned of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who will also entrust it to the other that's the reason why we have this it's very important every sunday afternoon as we meet i teach people to do what i have been taught to do you too there is something you've been taught to do teach others but if you are teaching you teach by the way the truth and the life there are some of the things you have been taught to do they are evil don't go and teach anyone else if what you have been taught is by the way the truth and the life then pass it on to others say amen to that tonight I just want to give you a very short word which I have preached but I'm preaching it again and the reason why I'm preaching it again is that today I understand that a team of pastors and deacons were listening to some of the messages I preached and one of them said ah I have listened to this message five times already but every time I listen to it there is something I hear that I seem not to have heard the previous time I listened. Amen and amen. Um, so another person says that as for the notes we take in church, we are only deceiving ourselves. Because, I mean, he has taken notes in church from a message. And when he was listening to the message, he realized that there was so much that was said that he didn't even write down. So it is always very important for me to preach the same thing because sometimes to... There are things that I thought I said, which I didn't even actually say, but it was in the message all right. So I'm still going to preach another thing to you, and it's all about you doubling on every side, and especially we doubling as a church. We want to say it in a more relaxed atmosphere, and I love what the cathedral is becoming, because these days our services are very relaxing. Give the Lord a clap of ring. It's a good sign. Say amen to that. We are relaxed. We are not in a rush. I love it. On Wednesday, the praise was good. Today, the praise is good. And every time we meet, we are going to sing praises. Every time we meet, we are going to sing praises. You can do worship at home, but when you come to church, we'll do what? Praise. But after preaching, we'll do worship, and then we'll pray and to receive power before we go. Say amen to that. So tonight, I'm teaching again on the simple mystery to increase and greater growth. The simple mystery to increase and greater growth. That is what I want to preach about. And if the Bible is yours, I want to preach to you. Hallelujah. Well, I want to preach to you. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 18. Matthew 5, 14 to 18. The simple mystery to increase and greater growth. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick to give light to them that are in the house. 
let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works not your bad works that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets but I've not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily I say unto you for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or a tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it is fulfilled. Amen and amen. No, nothing shall pass from the law until it is fulfilled. So it is very clear to us that the law has not passed like some people say it. Except that we must be able to put the law in perspective. Amen and amen. Alright, so we want to look at the simple mystery. The simple mystery to increase and greater growth for anything you started or pioneered. That is what we want to look at. Any vision that you have for this year, for your life, for the years to come. What is the simple mystery that will make that thing grow very big and increase? Amen and amen. What is the simple truth that will make that thing grow very big and increase? What is the simple truth that will make that thing grow very big and increase? Your little business, anything you set your mind to do, how would it make it grow? And we already know that there are two simple mysteries to make what you have started grow. The first one is make it visible. Make it visible. So write it. It's very important. Make it visible. I'm going to say some new things. So don't worry, it's the same theme with clearer and deeper revelation. Amen. Number one, make it visible. Number two, maintain good works. Number one, you make it visible. Number two, maintain good works. Amen and amen. Whatever you set out to do, whether you have a decision to be president, to be assemblyman, to be a watermelon seller, or to marry or even to start a church, this same two keys matter and they matter a lot whatever it is that you have set out to do to be the president of this country to be the assemblyman of this area to be a unit committee member to be a watermelon seller to start a church to marry this year whatever to be a gardener whatever you have chosen to do whatever you have chosen to do amen and amen even if you have decided to be an assassin or a suicide bomber you have to be visible and maintain good works. How many of you know that if somebody wants to kill someone, they would not come to your house because they don't know you as a killer? Are you getting the point? But if they know you as a contract killer, if they know you as a contract killer, and they also know that you have been able to kill someone without being caught, then when they want to eliminate someone, they will come to your house. Or isn't it? If you are in your house and somebody comes and says, eh, Madam, there is somebody who is really troubling me. I want to eliminate that person. Can you do it for me for five million Ghana cities? Would you laugh? Yes, as a person, Krachi, what is your problem? Who brought you here to tempt me? Are you getting the point? The issue is they won't come to you because you don't have a track record of being a good assassin. If you have been watching movies, those that are contracted to kill people are people who have killed successfully before. And those who are need, in need of a, a contract killer know where to find them. Are you getting the point? Right now, it doesn't matter. Right now, as you are sitting here, if you even feel like sniffing cocaine, where are you going to buy it? Because you don't even know where it is sold. How many of you are following what I'm preaching? So even if you want to be a cocaine dealer, you must be visible to those who matter. Are you getting the point? You must not be visible to everyone, but you must be visible to those who matter. We smokers in this area are visible to those who matter. Those who smoke, we know where to find the weed base and where it is sold, isn't it? Those of you who know they're found it by mistake. You're just going for evangelism and you happen to just bump into them. And you say, hey, say get to be sheha. But when a weed smoker comes to the area, they find it because they know how to sniff and find it. Am I preaching to you? So if you really want to increase whatever you have set out to do, you must be visible to those who matter. They should be able to see and find you. If they can't see and find you, there is no way you are going to get good market. 
and I'm preaching to you. Yeah, so if you have decided to get married, you must be visible to suitors. You must be visible to suitors who matter. The fact that I want to marry doesn't mean any suitor matters. Are you getting the point? It's not like anything that comes along, I grab it. I'm not that stupid. So if you even you want to marry, if that is your vision for this year, you must be available to suitors who matter and not just to anyone at all. So these two things that I've shared with you are very, very, very important secrets that you should never forget. Our church will double when we are able to become visible. Are you getting the point? Today I was driving past somewhere, then I saw a signboard. I immediately turned and reversed to go and see. If there was no signboard, I would never, because the thing is in the Lungu. But when I saw the signboard, I reversed, I turned, and I went to see the site for myself, what it looks like. So being visible is important for growth. Are you getting the point? Being visible is important for growth. So if we really want to grow as a church or you want to grow as an individual, whatever you have set out to do this year, you must be visible to those who matter. You, you don't have to be visible to everyone, but be visible to those who do what matter. Visibility is important. So it is important for you to understand. When you go to work, tell your boss, make us visible. Let people know we are here. And a lot more people will patronize the business we do. Are you getting what I'm preaching? But it is not enough to be visible. If you become visible, assuming you want to marry and you have become visible and people know that oh, there is a young lady in this place, she's ripe for marriage and want to marry. If they come and they realize that you are not truthful, you are not straightforward, you are not honest, you lack integrity, you are dirty, you are not hardworking, do you think they'll go ahead and marry you? I may be looking for a wife, but I don't want a dirty woman. I may be looking for a husband, but I, want, I don't want a lazy man. Are you getting the point? So it is not enough to be visible. You must maintain good works. When people come, they must find out that there is something good they can support. As a church, when people come in and they realize that there is nothing good they can throw their support at, they will not throw their support. There are people with money in this church who will never support anything because they don't see anything good in what we are doing. And I'm speaking God's word to you. When people find relevance in what we are doing, they will throw their support. Am I preaching to you? And you see, one day I heard somebody saying something. When I heard it, I just made the sign of the cross. Because I would have felt very insulted, even though I was even already feeling insulted. But you see, one thing is that I feel very insulted when as a pastor or as a preacher, people don't find any reason to serve in this church except there is a monetary incentive i feel very insulted the most important thing that we need for people who want to serve in the church is not what we can offer them it's what call is on their lives because as a pastor i will tell you there always come a time in your life as a pastor and in ministry where you don't find any reason to stay are you getting the point you don't find any reason to stay there is a time as a pastor you don't find any reason because i mean when you come to church you see the same faces of people there is no miracle there's nothing you just have to keep teaching the word it's just like you having a cocoa plantation in the first three years there might be no reason to continue spending money on those plants because they don't bring forth any fruit you just go around and weed around it three times a year spray it and then go back home and there is nothing to harvest on it and as a pastor that always comes when you look at our church sometimes people just get confused but when you look at our church our church is like a church that has been breaking up but we are not actually breaking up we are breaking in this church we have as the cathedral if you want to look at it technically we are like a breakaway church we were part of sandra chapel and the pastor left and took some members away to come and start this so this church would have to go through the process of growth just like any new church that starts the fact that we are an old name in a new building doesn't make us an old church it makes us a new church we are just a church that i've also started in about our third year are you following the preaching that i'm doing technically speaking this church i'm preaching in is only three years old it's not even three years old we are in our third year now technically speaking 
And even when the church was growing, whether it will grow or not grow, we still take some people out, we send them to Akoma. We take some people out, we send them to Kaswa. These are things you need to understand. Don't look at our church like you look at any Presbyterian church or an ICGC church that is there. They don't grow by this means. Are you following what I'm preaching? They are not growing by this means. So it's very important. So there comes a time when Abraham, you won't find any reason to be in this church. There always come a time. Because listen, if money is a great incentive for you, you are in the wrong church. I just like we don't pay instrumentalists. We also don't pay pastors. Neither do we force anyone to be a pastor. Am I preaching to someone? We don't force anyone. You come, the first thing, when you come and you say you want to be a pastor, the first test we give you is sit down. And sometimes you can sit down for three years because we want to tell you that in pastoral ministry, there will come a time when there is no reason to be around. You won't be preaching, you won't be praying, you won't be doing anything, you'll just be sitting in the church. So the reason for stay and pastoral ministry, pastoral ministry is just like winning a woman or marrying a woman. If you are a man and a woman wants to marry, and the only reason why the woman wants to marry you is because of money you can give her or what she can get out of you, and you go ahead and marry her, you have married a gold digger. And no intelligent man or no intelligent mother would advise their son and say, I see that this girl is following you because of the money you have been giving her, and so uh, go ahead and marry her. No intelligent mother would do that. That same way as a pastor, I don't want people who serve under me because at the end of the month I can put my hand in my pocket and give them. No, I don't have to give you. I don't have to give you. I don't have to give you. Am I preaching to you? I was, I was listening to some of my messages that I've been preaching and I think that message was advancing God's kingdom. I think I preached it during Easter. And I'm surprised that some people heard that message and still made very foolish decisions. I, I said verbatim in one of the podcasts they sent me. I said verbatim that today the church is full of covetous and greedy people that even pastors cannot be trusted. Go speaking. I will, I will I said things like they are filled with resentment, with bitterness, and these things were just flowing into the church. Just like Jesus telling Judas, whatever you have decided to do, do it very quickly. The secret to increase and growth. Is when you are visible and maintain good works. Visibility alone will not make us increase. We must have good works so that when people come around, they will see the good works and be forced to stay because of the good works. He said, let your light shine. Let your light shine so that men will see your good works. He didn't say amplify your darkness. He said, let your light shine. Why did he say, let your light shine? Because there is a little darkness in every light. And there is a little light in every darkness. There is a little black in every white. And there is a little white in every black. There is a little good in every evil man. And there is a little evil in every good man. Now, Jesus is saying that, let your light so shine before men. Which means that hide your darkness from the full glare of the public. That is why in Akan there is something that is said, say, when there are ugly things in our lives, in our friendships, in our relationships, in our families, we don't wash them, we don't wash our dirty linen in public. If it is an internal family matter, we speak of them as internal family matter. You don't show your darkness. When you have an evil character, you don't bring it to church. Keep your bad character in the house. Someone offends you, you tell the person, thank God that you offended me in the church. You should have done that at the lorry station. You would have seen the dark side of me. But this is church. My light will shine before me. Say amen to that. Am I, am I preaching God's word? So how do I let my good works shine? Is there a secret? How do I shine? How do I shine? How do I maintain good works? How do I maintain good works? How do I shine? If we say there is a little evil in every good man, is that an excuse for me to go ahead and be evil, hating everyone because I they will make excuses for my evil? No. No. That's not what Jesus is saying. 
in as much as there is a little evil in every man if you are really serious about maintaining good works then you will suppress and beat under the darkness in you that is the first point how do you maintain good works how do you maintain good works suppress and beat under suppress and beat under the evil or darkness in you suppress it if you can't kill it suppress it Apostle Paul says that I beat my own body under. I beat the weaknesses. I beat the evil in me under. So that after I've called many to the faith, I do not become a castaway. Is it a good message or is it not a good message? Suppress it. There is a little evil in every man. So beat your body under. Everyone is trying to control himself. You to control yourself. Say amen to that. You want your good works to show, suppress, beat your body under. There are times when you feel like, but please contain it. Press it under. Tell yourself, I want to keep this darkness under control. Am I preaching to you? So suppress and beat your body under. That's how you maintain good works. That's how you shine. That's how you maintain good works. Suppress and beat your body under. If it is in the context of business, try to suppress the negative things about your production. If it is anything, 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 yes, there are some skeletons in every organization, in every house. There are rooms where we keep dirty things and there are rooms where we are prepared so nicely. Am I preaching to you? But let us minimize the junk we keep at home. Let us minimize the junk we keep in our own lives. Let us minimize the evil in our lives. Suppress it, beat it under. Don't let the evil in you take the better part of you. Let the light in you rather take a better part of you. One day, I was going to sleep and I told myself, lately, I wake up every morning thinking about this nonsense. I said, no, for this particular day, I want to sleep and wake up and think about nothing but church growth. And I realized that that particular day, I had greater peace. In fact, greater peace that marveled people who were watching. And I believe it's a great secret. How do I spend my time waking up every morning thinking about nonsense? I think I want to wake up every morning rather thinking about doubling. My mind should be on something productive. Is it a good point? How many of you realize that even as a young woman, as a young man, you, you could be so preoccupied with a guy or a girl or your love life until your mind doesn't think anything productive. And if you will be sincere with yourself, there are times when for one month, you thought about nothing productive except about a boy or a girl. It's called infatuation. I don't know whether I'm preaching. Can we make a decision that, yes, I love people, I love this person, but I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning not thinking about him or her, but thinking about something productive I want to do with my life. Thinking about something productive. I'm a teacher. I want to wake up tomorrow morning thinking about how my children can pass the paper I teach with excellence. That's what I want to fill my mind. I'm a pastor. I want to wake up in the morning thinking about how Peter walked on the sea. Just thinking about that. This, if you meditate on the book of the law day and night, you become fruitful. You double that way. Are we going to suppress the evil in us? Who is going to give it a try? You want to wake up. How many of you realize that it is, it is just unfruitful to wake up in the morning thinking about the things that hurt you? Has it occurred to you? Don't you think that it's better to write, rather wake up in the morning and just say that I want to think about something productive. About my life. What do I do with my life? What do I do? I think, think about it. You, you just wake up and say this morning uh, my mind would not be filled with junk. My mind would not be filled with the things that draw me to evil. I want to rather focus on my mind, on church growth. And you will realize that you will even pray that day 
better tomorrow if we focus on church we will pray more for the church we we'll pray more for the church than to worry about John how many of you realize that sometimes you see how boring the house especially those of you who are alcoholics you used to go to school and everything you feel the house is boring yes spend all their time watching television all their time morning to evening are you getting the point why because their minds are on nothing nothing productive do you know what fills their mind Panda. That, that's what fills the mind Ufu. <laughs> can, can, are we going to fix our minds on something productive tomorrow and it will begin tonight as you go to sleep just tell yourself that if, uh, if there are things that are lovely they are praiseworthy things that are pure of truth things that are of power these are things I fix my mind on do you know that you can just fix your mind on a beautiful future how that in the next five years you are going to be an activist Perhaps all over television speaking for young women, you just focus your mind on that. It's possible. It's possible. Am I, am I speaking to someone? It's possible. And I said five years because a lot of things don't just happen in two months. Amen. Amen. A lot of things don't just happen in two months. So you set right goals, think about it, brood over it, think about it, go ahead, and that's all. One day, I was speaking with someone and I told the person that somebody is gone to town. I said, whatever the person gets, that could make you feel like you should have also gone to town. Make sure you get it whilst you stay in this village. Am I preaching to you? If your friend comes to tell you that, oh, I have a visa. I'm going to America. You say, thank God, you're going to America. What, what are some of the things you are hoping to bring back when you are coming back? And these days, you don't even go and bring anything back. Because this place to America is becoming like Mamubi to Numa. You just go and come back. You don't have to bring anything. Am I preaching to you? No, am I preaching to you? These days, it's, it's funny. And Sami, since we have not start, just started traveling to Numa, it means that we are losing a lot. People, people just travel to Dubai. They say vacation for two. I see them advertise it all. Just go to Dubai, see bridge things, take photos, spend two thousand dollars, and come back. It's as easy as that. How many of you have heard such adverts? Israel, they are going. Go oh, spend two thousand dollars and go and see the water Jesus was baptized in. Then what would that do to me? But that's it. Oh yes, you are going to see where Jesus was baptized. See the holy wall, see Solomon's temple, and the temple they are showing you, you only see a small wall of the temple. Then go and stand there and take photos and ride a donkey and just come back. Two thousand dollars. That is nine thousand Ghana cities, ninety million cities gone in one week. And if you travel with your wife, that is hundred and eighty million. That is on a budget expenditure. Then you are back. You are going to see the willing wall and taking photos and paste them on Facebook. And we like it for you. Say amen to them. Can I preach to you? My classmates told me that. They said, oh, they want to plan next year. We need to go to uh, Nairobi and go and see the safari and go to Tanzania. That's what they are planning. And they are planning that everybody is going to travel with his wife and children for us to go and see giraffe and crocodile and things like that in Tanzania and come back and take photos because this year two of them went to visit one of our classmates who is there he's a missionary there they went to visit him and they went on their safari and they showed us giraffe and all that and I was like wow this is so natural it makes you feel like Eden who said Eden is like Nairobi but we have not started traveling to Lomi it means that we are lagging behind so what am I preaching fix your mind on beautiful things Sometimes the only reason why we spend our time on worthless things is because we spend our mind on worthless things. So the first secret to maintain good works, where did I talk about? 
suppress the evil in you. Beat it under. Beat it under. Focus your mind on beautiful things. Let me give you the second key that would help you to maintain good works. Be guided by the wisdom of the law. Be guided by the wisdom of the law. The law is not something we ought to obey. Under grace, we are not supposed to obey law. With the fact that you obey the law doesn't mean you'll be saved. The law can't save anyone. And this is how you get in the point. But at least we want to be guided by the wisdom of the law. You see, when you buy a fresh pressing iron, you don't spend all your time reading the manual because you have always been using pressing iron. And usually, you've been using the same brand for a long time. So if it's Philips, that's what you've been using. If it's a steam iron, that's what you've been using, isn't it? So you don't spend your time. But the fact that you don't spend your time reading the manual does not mean that you plug the iron, you switch it on, and then after five minutes, you will lift it and say, I want to find out whether this iron is hot. Then you lift your shirt and press it towards your tummy. Is that what you do? Yeah. You didn't read the manual. You are not obeying the manual. But you don't do that. Why? You are guided by the wisdom of the manual. Isn't it? You are guided through use. Are you following what I'm preaching? That is why Hebrews chapter 5 says that bones are for those who through use have exercised their senses. So through use, through the use of Philip's iron, your common sense has been exercised to know what to do with an iron and not to do with an iron. So by use of the law, you exercise your conscience to know what's right to be done and what's not right to be done. One of the common lines I've been hearing from young people I interact with is, so oh, I didn't think it was anything bad. Yes, you won't think it's anything bad because you are not guided by the wisdom of the law. When you are guided by the wisdom of the law, you would know what is bad. And what's right, even if it doesn't look so bad. Am I preaching to someone? So, because no, I'm not preaching good, you are hearing good. You are hearing good. You are hearing good. Once you know I'm preaching good news, you heard it right. And I'm preaching to you. Be guided by the wisdom of the law. There is something the law says. I mean, we, we, we don't say things like, some of the things we say, they are not laws for you to obey. They are wisdom to guide you. It was church you came and we said that when we close, go straight home. That same wisdom should apply when you close from school. You still go straight home. It's wisdom. You don't say I have closed, but I want to go and buy rice. What do you mean by that? Go home. Be guided by the wisdom of the Lord. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Success comes through obeying the wisdom of the Lord. The wisdom of the Lord. The wisdom of the Lord. Listen, I have failed a few times and I realized that the only reason why I failed was because I wasn't guided by the wisdom of the law. Are you getting the point? When you are guided by the wisdom of the law, you don't fail. You succeed at it. Be guided by the wisdom of the law. That's how you maintain good works. Now, let me give you the third one. The third one that will help you. Good works does not come easy. Uh, good works does not come easy right that maybe that will help you understand the point properly good works does not come easy good works does not come easy so do what your hands are found to do with all your might uh, good works does not come easy so do what your hands are found to do with all your mind good grades does not come easy good grades does not come easy when you see someone who's gone to school and I've had maybe two A's and two B's and two C's and I've been able to pro progress to the university, it didn't come easy. Even cheating in exam does not come easy, does it? Copying, copying, pa. What do you people call a shingat? Even wearing a shingat to the exam hall, it doesn't come easy. It comes with a lot of hard work. How many of you know that some people can travel with foreign material, relevant foreign material to the exam hall, but they can never read it inside the exam hall? You need to be a real thief to be able to take in foreign material. But the, the best foreign material you can take to any exam hall is the foreign material that you store here. 
How many of you are following me? The best foreign material, the best foreign material, the best shin guard is the one you store here. Is the one that is the best one, but you can carry it by other means. But the best way to do it is carry it here. It doesn't come easy. Two A's, two B's, and two C's would not come easy. It doesn't come to people sleeping on a bed and snoring. It comes with people who did what they are doing with all of their mind. So good works don't come easy. Am I preaching to you? Good works don't come easy. So if you want some good works, be willing to do what your hands are found to do with all of your mind. As I'm pastoring the church, as I'm pastoring the church, I, I, I know that good works don't come easy. Some of you have not been around for far too long. But listen, dissertation, uh, uh, deserting, I don't know whether dissertation is the right word, but to be abandoned, abandoning and rejection is a normal part of ministry. I can give you a long list of chains. And one day when you come to Bible school, ask me, I'll tell you. Mention any church. I'll give you a long list of people who were seven, very close to the senior pastor who left the church. And when they left the church, nothing happened to the church. Everything happened to them. Oh, I can tell you about one man who used to run the solution services at ICGC, even before they came to Christ, before Prophet Anok came. His name is called Reverend Oben Daku. For some reason, he was taken to Kumasi. There was another gentleman, you know him today, Prophet Yalu. He used to run Tuesday Solution Services at Christ Temple, at ICGC. He was taken to Nkoko, and now he's Yalu, he's not in ICGC. ICGC have increased. Today, I went to see one of their church buildings by one of the small pastors. And please, all the ones you see, they call small pastors are like my type. Are you getting the point? All the ones you see, they say small pastors, they are like my type. Am I preaching to you? That's a young pastor. When we say a young pastor, look at your age, subtract it from my age. By the time I'll be 60, you will be 40 something. So now you are the young pastors in the church. So when I'll be celebrating my 60th birthday like the Ota Bells are celebrating, that is when you'll be celebrating your 40 something and you'll be the ones pastoring our new churches all over town. You are in a rush. You are in a rush. I say you are in a rush. Rush. Send a message to them. It's silly to think the way they are thinking. They are in a rush. Glory to God. I can give you a long list. Listen, they are fine preachers today not because they have always been fine preachers. They have become fine preachers today because of the refined. They see, ah, uh, now when people come and they say, I want to sweep the church, they, they just become like non fashion I say, you want to sweep the church? Okay, where do you want to sweep? Anywhere you come. Then they go home. Because they realize that you don't need to waste your time on the people. The ones that will stay alive will stay alive, whether you stay with them or not. The ones that will die, put them in your blood, they will still die. Because they are foreign material. The white blood cells in your blood will fight them out. I'm preaching to you. So, you really want to shine. My time is up. I will just leave these three with you. What are the three points? Number one, what do you do? What? Suppress and beat down the evil in you. There is a little evil in every good Christian. And there is a little good in every evil sinner. But whatever it is, suppress the evil in you. But do you know that it is easier to suppress the evil when you are a good Christian with a little evil than to be an evil sinner with a little good. Because if you are an evil sinner, you have a big evil to suppress. And it's too difficult to suppress it. So rather strive to be a good Christian with a little evil. So that it's easier suppressing the little evil. So that statement is not meant to make excuses for our foolishness. It's meant to let us know that there is a little evil we must work on it. The second one is what? Be guided by the wisdom of the law. Be guided by the wisdom of the law. If a woman was caught in adultery and was stoned to death, be guided by that wisdom. Someone was caught in witchcraft and was stoned to death, be guided by that wisdom and don't follow witchcraft. 
And the final one is that good works don't come easy. Is that what we say? Good works don't come easy. So if you really want good works, do what your hands have found with all of your mind. I couldn't show you how to shine, but it's okay. I've shown you how to maintain good works. And I believe we are going to have a fruitful time on Sunday. God bless you. Please be on your feet. It's a great time having you in church. Amen. Amen. Are you learning anything that will change your life? Yeah, it will not just change your life. It will increase us and give us greater growth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is Reverend Simpebidiakum, specially inviting you to fellowship with us at the High City Cathedral, Pure Water, Ashonman Village. Or you can call and WhatsApp me on 0278-622-627. 0278-622-627. Looking forward to seeing you at church this Sunday at 7 a.m. God bless you for coming. Amen.